Deciding on a good drop spot is one of the most important things you can do before jumping in the battle bus. Dropping in at the same spot every game will get you familiarized with floor and chest loot, along with better positioning to win more spawn fights. We brushed over this topic in one of our previous episodes, and it really got me thinking. Thus, a new video for you guys is born. What's good everybody, it's Dan, and today we're going over the top 10 named drop spots. My goal is to rank the top drop spots based on multiple variables so you guys can make an informed decision moving forward. Also, I wanted to let you guys know this type of video requires a lot of research, so if you appreciate me doing all the hard work for you, make sure to leave a like. If you want to see more content similar to this, then you guys know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and make sure the bell is on to never miss a thing. By the way, if you're looking for more educational Fortnite content, I highly recommend taking a look at the Insta Pro Pass over at ProGuides.com. Purchasing a Pro Pass will unlock a wall of content, mastery courses, and multiple live coaching sessions with real Fortnite pros. Elevate your game today! Link, as always, is in the description down below. Alright, now let's get into what you've all been waiting for. First, we need to go over some of the ground rules before actually ranking the drop spots. We will only be going over named drop spots such as Happy Hamlet. Yes, this means that we won't be covering unnamed spots like Westworld or Mini Junk, as we don't want this video to be half an hour long. But there is still 10 spots that we will be going over, which is more than enough for some action-packed content. Let's talk about the ranking system that we'll be using in this video. I will be giving a set amount of stars for every condition that the drop spot meets, with a maximum of 10 stars. So basically, 10 stars means that this is the best drop spot ever, and 1 star means to never go here. Most of the drop spots in this list will fall somewhere closer to the middle, so keep that in mind as we jump into things. There will be a breakdown as to how a drop spot will get stars. Loot is super important, and we will be giving each drop spot 1, 2, or 3 stars based on, well, you know, how much loot there is. This includes chests, floor loots, and vending machines. Almost equally as important is how many people you will typically expect to have to fight off. More loot will typically mean more opponents, so to balance the stars from loot, we will be giving up to 3 stars based on the amount of people typically landing at the drop spot. Obviously, the less people landing on average means more stars. Materials will also give up to 3 additional stars. If there is readily available wood, brick, or metal, each will be worth 1 star. Finally, up to 1 star will be rewarded for relative position on the map. So if the drop spot is on the edge of the map, or has some detrimental terrain issues, it probably won't get a star in this category. Anyways, now that we know how drop spots are being scored, let's jump into it. Let's kick things off and take a look at Tilted Town. Replacing Neo Tilted and the first Rift Zone of Season X, Tilted is unique for the inability to break or place builds. Since you can't farm mats, Tilted Town unfortunately gets 0 out of 3 stars in that category. Landing here will net you some great loot due to the limited loot pool. Multiple launch pads, impulses, a blue pump, and heals for days is typical. That is, if you get out alive. The competition is quite stiff at this POI, but not as much as when the spot was first introduced to the game. 3 out of 3 stars for loot, and 1 out of 3 stars for the stiff competition. Positioning is perfect, as Tilted Town is located right in the center of the map. Add another star for positioning, for a total of 5 stars. All in all, pretty average. What else did you expect for number 10? Hopping over to number 9, we've got Paradise Palms, and man, I've got a lot to say about this one. To keep it short, however, it seems as though Paradise has become the new version of Tilted Towers, where everyone feels the need to hot drop it. Zero stars. If you're looking to go somewhere safe and quiet, this ain't it. Materials are quite solid, yet nothing to fawn over. Buildings made of brick along with metal cars and palm trees that line up the roads is good for 2 stars. Loot is an obvious 3 stars, don't need to say much about that one. Positioning is alright. Not being directly edge zone helps a lot, so take another star for that. 6 stars. Taking a look at number 8, Happy Hamlet shows up on this list purely because of how stacked you can get. It's no secret that Happy Hamlet has some of the most loot compared to any other spot, so 3 stars in this category is practically a given. On top of that, you won't find a better drop spot for materials, where a quality blend of wooden structures, brick buildings, and metal cars net a commanding 3 stars. With great loot comes great competition, however. Think about it, if you're going to get stacked almost 100% of the time from this spot, of course people will want a piece of that. No stars for competition, unfortunately. You will also have a long walk to zone if you land it happy, so don't expect any love in that respect. All in all, it's a trade-off between some of the most stacked loot on the map and having to fight an ungodly amount of teams to leave with your life. 6 stars. Time to hit the snowy hills over at Polar Peak, clocking in at number 7 on our list. Polar Peak used to be one of my personal favorite drop spots, up until that monster came by last season and destroyed half the hill. Loot is quite low at this point, 1 star. Materials is limited to brick, and brick only, 1 star. 
The redeeming qualities of this forsaken drop spot is that most everyone has lost interest in the spot, meaning you have a pretty solid chance of being uncontested. 3 stars. You'll also be relatively centered on the map, so let's round off Polar Peak with another star. If we were doing this list last season, Polar might just have been at the top. Unfortunately, it slips down to 6 stars. Still, not terrible. Ditch the snow and hit the shore. Time for Snobby Shores to take the spotlight coming in at number 6. Even though Snobby gets no love in regard to positioning, given the fact that it's on the western edge of the map, everything else is solid. 17 chest spawns is good for 2 stars when it comes to loot. Competition over at Snobby Shores is quite average, another 2 stars. I can't imagine many other drop spots have a better combination of wood, brick, and metal, so I think it would be an injustice giving anything under 2.5 stars, totaling 6.5 stars. Oh yeah, I can give half stars. Taking a look at number 5, we got Lonely Lodge, where the loot is surprisingly solid. 16 chests and nuggets of floor loot is good for 2 stars any day of the week. Competition is also relatively low, so I'm going to have to call it 3 stars. Wood and brick is abundant here, but the metal is quite lacking. Let's tack on another 2 stars in that regard. Finally, positioning is quite bad, so no stars here. 7 stars, not bad at all, Lonely Lodge. Junk Junction comes in at number 4. It's a really interesting drop spot because of just how opposite it is compared to, say, Paradise, which we went over not too long ago. Almost no competition is good for a full 3-star score. Loot isn't bad per se, but if you loot the surrounding buildings, which are technically an extension of Junk Junction, I'd feel safe giving a 2-star score. Junk is one of the only spots that has good metal, and just for that, we have to give 2 stars for the materials category. For position, well, if you've ever been to Junk before, you already know. If we could give negative stars, I would, but for the sake of fairness, 0 stars it is. 7 stars for Junk Junction, all things considered. Frosty Flights is one of my go-to drop spots, so it had to show up at number 3 on this list. Ever since the Baller Vault, Frosty Flights has seen less competition than ever. Landing at this former hot POI might just feel like a ghost town in Season X. You will still see some opponents here, but much less than before. 2.5 stars seems adequate. Loot has always been very rewarding at Frosty, given the abundance of floor loot between warehouses, solar panels, and the main buildings. I have to add another 2.5 stars in this area. Similar to Junk, Frosty is made out of pure metal. Although you'd be hard pressed to find huge wood or brick resources here, metal is one of the hardest resources to acquire. And don't forget that there's a wood forest surrounding all of Frosty. 2 stars for materials, but 0 stars for positioning of course. Have you ever tried foot rotating out of Frosty? A nightmare to say the least, but still good for 7 stars. Shifty Shafts is a dark horse, sneaking all the way to number 2 on our list. Shifty is easily overlooked as a drop spot, but that's why it's so solid. Given that it doesn't get a lot of looks, you could easily give this drop spot 2.5 stars for the competition, or should I say lack thereof. Materials is all around very solid, with wooden trees, scattered rocks, and lines of metal railroads to boot. You can't say this spot is deserving of anything less than 2 stars. Loot is also above average given the two houses to go along with the shafts. Another 2 stars in this category is quite fair. Also, something to consider, would you rather have above decent loot with less people to fight, or better loot with a wave of people to fend off? Personally, I'd go for the former. Finally, Shifty is one of the more centered POIs, so I'd definitely feel safe giving it one more star. Seven and a half stars. And the moment you guys have all been waiting for, showing up at number one is Fatal Fields. You guys probably weren't expecting to hear this one, myself included, but there is a really strong case to be made for Fatal and you'll have to hear me out. With the removal of Season 9 slip streams and drones, Fatal Fields has become a far less popular land spot, especially in team playlists. Given that Trios is the competitive playlist of choice at the moment, it's really important to consider. This spot goes uncontested so many times in Trios that it's not even funny. Needless to say, I'm giving it a 3 star rating. You'll find yourself forgetting that spawn fights were even a thing. Materials are a whole different beast and one that Fatal excels in. With two rock pits and two mini forests surrounding the outskirts of Fatal, you're looking at max wood and brick easily. Not only that, but you'll have enough to get your entire team up to max wood and brick since there's just that much available. I want to give 3 stars just for that alone, but since the metal isn't too abundant, we can settle with 2. The loot is also something that people often overlook. Fatal Fields has 23 chests, compared to 25 chests at Paradise and 21 at Retail. With that said, the floor loot is a bit lacking, so I wouldn't feel justified giving it a full 3 star rating in this category, so let's meet in the middle with 2.5 stars. Finally, although the mobility options such as the slipstream and drone were removed at the beginning of Season X, Fatal Fields is much more centered in relation to many other POIs, such as Lucky Landing and Frosty Flights that both have a much longer trek. Another star for positioning will net Fatal Fields 8.5 stars, good enough for the number one spot. 
When we really break it down, it becomes apparent that this list really promotes a safer playstyle. And it sort of makes sense, as picking out spots that have decent loot with the least risk possible is what we want, right? Well, if you're trying to pub stomp, this might not be for you. But if you're in a scrim match and need to preserve your life or you're trying to get your first victory royale, then I'd highly recommend taking this list seriously. Alright guys, I want to hear from you, so join the conversation by leaving a comment with your thoughts down below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? I want to hear from all of you guys. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video and want me to know it, make sure you leave a like and hit subscribe. And if you want to hit me up directly, you can find me on all social channels at, at Daniel Ammerman. That's all I got for today. Till next time.